Welcome as we come together to worship our God. It is a cold and rainy day, and I'm glad that you were, had the courage to come out in the cold and the rain of um, today and to come to worship our God together. Let us remember that our vision for Monumental is hands and hearts. So as we worship, may you bring your whole self before God and have an open heart as part of this community of faith. Our Rise Against Hunger event is scheduled for this coming Saturday, April the 27th, and we will be planning to pack at least 10,000 meals, so it's a big project. It's not too late to participate and to register to participate. Um, this is a mission for all ages and is a part of our Christian practice to serve our neighbors. This is a great opportunity to invite a friend to participate in um, an activity or mission here at Monumental. Remember, if you're coming to please wear comfortable clothes, leave your dangling jewelry at home, and you can wear a ball cap if you don't want to wear a hairnet. And of course, if you do not feel well, please stay home. Our next Noonday concert will be on Monday, April the 29th. Three students from the Governor's School will be our guest musicians. And then this week, on Thursday, there's a Red Cross blood drive at St. John's Episcopal Church, and that will go from 11 to 4 p.m. Um, you may be aware that we're having a critical shortage of blood in our region and across the country, so if you're able to give, please do so and help save a life. Our Wednesday night suppers for the homeless and others in our community will begin on May the 22nd. Um, we're really fortunate that Mercy Chefs will prepare our food for this supper, and um, volunteers are needed to help set up and to serve and to clean up. So if you are interested in participating in this mission, please let Wendy Roan know, and um, we'll get you on the list to be a volunteer for that program. In our worship today, we're changing our first hymn to number 62, All Creatures of Our God and King, number 62, and it's verses 1 through 4 and 7. The words will also be on the screen. In our opening prayer, will also be on the screen, and you're invited to read it silently and to pray silently our opening prayer. Let us prepare our hearts and minds now to worship God.
Would you stand as you are able and join me in our call to worship? Love one another, even when love involves risk. Love and care for others, even when caring is hard. Love in truth and action. Let us sing All Creatures of Our God and King. It's number 62. In your hymnals, we'll sing verses 1 through 4 and 7.
It's a different way of praying when you are surrounded by the visual. Let us hear the scripture now from the first letter, uh, according to John, chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's good and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than, their, than our hearts, he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
gifts of our hearts and our whole selves. May they be used to love God and love our neighbor. Amen. Let us sing, Abide With Me. It's number 700 in your hymnal, or the words are on the screen. Let us pray. Almighty God, open our hearts that we may let you in, that you will abide in us in all things. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Put your heart into it. That's how we indicate that something is really important. That's how we show that we are really committed that we're really involved, that we're really connected, we put our heart into it. When we really mean it, our hearts are in it. And when they aren't, or if we're just half-hearted or worse, then nothing happens, or nothing of significance anyway. In the letter of 1 John, it tells us to put our hearts into loving God, loving each other, and loving our neighbors. 
And so every now and then we need to ask ourselves if our hearts are really in it. Every now and then we need to do a test to see if this loving God and neighbor thing is something that we're really committed to. We could call it a gut check. John wants our hearts in it. That much is clear. But there's also a whole body mentioned in that first verse that was read. It's about a total commitment, laying down our lives for one another. Now that's really kind of jarring if you think about it. But then the next verse, verse 17, that's kind of interesting. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses to help? And that last little part of that phrase, and yet refuses to help. Eugene Peterson's The Message paraphrases it like this, but turn a cold shoulder and do nothing. So we're moving from warm hearts to cold shoulders. But if we look at the Greek translation, that may really catch us off guard. Because the place of emotion for the ancient world was not the heart. The heart in ancient times represented thoughts and will. When you do something with your whole heart, you were doing it as an act of will. You know, we've been told many times that the love that Jesus calls for is not an emotional love, but love in action. It has less to do with emotion than it does with decision. So for the Greeks of ancient times, the emotions were a bit lower in the body. For the Greeks, it was actually the gut, the bowels. In the time that this letter was written, verse 17 would say, or come out, we have the goods of this world, but when we see a brother or sister in need, we close our bowels against them. So then how does God's love abide in us. Now that might seem kind of icky or unseemly at first, but think about when a telephone call comes in in the middle of the night and, and you fear that it's bad news of some sort. What do you feel? Isn't there this, this queasiness in the pit of your stomach? And when you hurt with those who hurt, doesn't it hit you in the gut? The problem is, is that we have learned to guard that gut feeling, to guard our feelings in general. We have learned to change the channel when pictures of hungry children appear, and I cannot watch those ASPCA commercials with all the suffering dogs and cats. You know, I look away or, or turn my attention to something else. And we've also learned to turn the page when the newspaper is full of need and want and brokenness. Nothing to do with me, we think to ourselves. We've shut off our emotions. We've closed our bowels, as John would say. So as we read this, the end of this third chapter of John's letter, he asks for a gut check. Do we still care about what is going on in the world? Or has it just gotten to be too much? Have our emotions become numb to the suffering and the tragedies that we see and that we read about? Have we just turned it all off? It may seem like there's simply too much, too much beyond our capacity to help. But John is asking us to do something. Let us love not in word or speech, he said, but in truth and in action. There's this call to get to work to do something. So from time to time, we need to reassess our efforts when it comes to mission and service. We need to ask ourselves, is loving my neighbor just something I talk about, or is it something I do? You know, we have opportunities to love our neighbor. Rise Against Hunger is one way we offer ourselves in service to our neighbors in need. Giving blood at the Red Cross blood drive is another way we offer life to our neighbors needing life-giving blood. And then in another part of the passage, John 
is asking us to care. He says a lot about love in our hearts. So is our heart in the right place? Are we at ease with our hearts? Maybe we should substitute that, substitute the word conscience for the word heart. Maybe John is asking us to put our conscience at ease or to get our conscience right with God by caring for our neighbor. Sometimes we're called to love and care for our neighbor in small, everyday actions. But sometimes God gives a big dream, a dream that seems beyond anything that we could imagine, at least on our own. But if God gives a dream, then God provides a way. Central United Methodist Church is a church that was started in the 1920s in the Boston area of Arlington, Virginia. And that church was given a big dream. Since the year 2007, the church prayed about how they might assist in the affordable housing crisis in their area of Arlington. And God gave them a dream. And after 17 years, that dream is a reality. The church partnered with Arlington Partnership for Affordable Housing. And the plan included tearing down their original church and clearing the way for an eight-story modern building. The new building includes a sanctuary for the church for them to worship. It includes an expanded space for the preschool that they had had since 1968. And it included 144 affordable rental units. It also has a commercial kitchen for Provision Church, which is a, a catering program and new faith community in the Virginia Conference. The new sanctuary had its first worship service just a few weeks ago on Easter Sunday. And then this past Monday, April 15th, the rental units were unveiled in a grand opening and ribbon cutting. And the church is now preparing welcome baskets for their new neighbors in the 144 rental units. The people of Central United Methodist Church laid down everything to love their neighbors and to help solve a housing issue for the homeless and the low-income people in their community. They literally tore down the building and built something new, giving and bringing new life to their neighbors. This new ministry provided worship space, a plan and place for feeding people, a place for children to grow and thrive, and shelter for those who are most overlooked. God gave a big dream, and the love of the church as they abided in Christ helped fulfill this mission through sacrificing itself for the needs of others. Part of the love we have for God and neighbor includes loving all of creation as well. When we abide in Christ and Christ abides in us, we seek to live in harmony and peace with all living creatures and all parts of the natural world. Our actions convey love to others when we live in harmony with respect and care for people of all races and nationalities. Our actions bring joy to our communities and to communities that share the planet, even if they are far from us geographically, when we put our faith in God into action toward peace and justice. We have models of people who have taken risks for justice and peace for God's creation. Civil rights leaders such as John Lewis and Martin Luther King Jr. put their lives on the line to challenge deeply entrenched racism and to win justice and civil liberties for themselves and for their people, even if they weren't able to see it come to fruition. Then in 2016, Native American activists at Standing Rock, North Dakota, physically put themselves in danger to protect the sacred sites and natural resources threatened by the Dakota <clears throat> Axis pipeline. They were ready to give their lives for the land that was sacred to them and that was being threatened. And those who watched from the outside often didn't understand 
that the significance of these lands and what they meant to the Native Americans, because these were burial sites, sacred burial sites that were being threatened. It would be just as like as if the pipeline had been planned to go through Arlington Cemetery. So thousands gathered to physically protect that piece of God's creation that was under attack. And many were motivated by their faith to protect God's creation. In his 12th century prayer for all created things, St. Francis of Assisi recognizes that we human beings are not only connected to each other, but to all things that God has made. Referring to the sun and the moon and winter, wind, water, and fire as our metaphorical brothers and sisters, Francis understood that we must care for them, just as we do our literal siblings. The created order works in the same way that families are called to work together. And our opening hymn, the one we sang this morning, is based on this prayer of St. Francis. You remember the words, our brother the sun, who is our day and who brings us the light. For our sister the moon and for the stars. For our brother the wind and for air and clouds. For our sister water. For our brother fire. For our mother the earth who sustains and keeps us and brings forth various fruits. As Christians, we have long been called to recognize our connection to God's created order. We abide in all of God's creation. And then this week, the General Conference of the United Methodist Church begins on Tuesday. Our church saint, Darlene Amen, attended General Conference many times and experienced the international nature of our church. She knew and became friends with United Methodist Christians from every part of the globe as together they prayed and as they sang and as they worshiped and as they worked for justice and peace for all God's creation. This week, the General Conference will work to continue a denomination that believes and lives out God's big dream for a world of justice and peace, a church that abides in Christ, loving God and neighbor. They will have a lot of work to do over the next 12 days, and they need our prayers as they navigate how the United Methodist Church can, most ser can serve most faithfully as they act out God's love by deciding to show love. The key to this way of living comes from an unlikely and maybe not wanted place. The key to the peace of mind or ease of heart comes from our obedience. It's not really one of our favorite words. Obedience has the reputation of getting in our way or getting in the way of our perceived freedom. We sometimes worship freedom more than we worship God. And for the sake of freedom, we sometimes find ourselves willing to say or do terrible things as individuals and sometimes as a nation. So obedience, it goes against the grain. It rubs us the wrong way. And yet John tells us that peace comes from having Christ abide in our hearts. And Christ abides in us when we are obedient. When we act out of love, when we live as Christ lived, when we follow the example of our Savior, when we are obedient to the command to love as he loved, then Christ abides. And when Christ abides, then our hearts do not condemn us, even when we stand in the presence of God. John is calling for a gut check. He wants us to put our hearts into it. He calls us to abide in Christ. He wants us, out of obedience to the Lord of our lives, to let our whole lives reflect the life of Christ, to reflect the love of Jesus. It is a way of living out the love and joy that we experience 
when abiding in Christ with our whole selves. He offers us peace, the deepest peace that we can feel in our gut. But it isn't something that comes half-heartedly. He reminds us that Christ wants our whole selves, all of us. So let us invite Christ to abide in us as we offer our very lives to Christ, the one who gave all for us. Amen. As we go to God in our prayer time, let's begin by singing Into My Heart. O God, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, you place us in your creation and you command us to take care of it. Your works declare glory and splendor. You call us to praise and reverence. Where we have degraded and destroyed earth's bounty, forgive us. Where we have taken beauty and majesty for granted, have mercy upon us where we have become estranged from the creatures with whom we share the planet, grant us your peace. Renew us in the waters of baptism, refresh us with the wind of your spirit, and sustain us with the bread of life. We pray today for our upcoming mission event, Rise Against Hunger, where we will pack dehydrated meals for those in need. They are needed because of catastrophic events like earthquakes and war, which have ruined the ground on which to plant, the heat of climate change, which caused the plants not to produce, and because of so many other natural and human-caused hunger. We ask you to bless those who will receive the meals, knowing that they are sent with the spirit of Christian generosity, and as a token of your grace, unmerited by any of us. We ask you to open our hearts as the assemblers and packers of these meals that we may find a new understanding of your work in a world that is beyond our comprehension in so many ways. May we find ways to connect with the world through love in action. We pray for those who suffer this day and need to be restored in health, physically and emotionally. We pray for those who need to make weighty decisions, particularly our United Methodist General Conference delegates as they gather and discern. We pray for congregations and pastors who will receive new pastors and find out who they are today. And we pray for our scholarship students from Virginia Wesleyan as they travel to Italy. And we pray for Monumental Church for ourselves that we might become the church and the people that you would have us to be. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray the prayer that he taught us while here on earth. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
closing hymn this morning, number 408 in your hymnal, The Gift of Love. Let's stand as you're able and sing together. go into the world, let us put our hearts into the work of serving others. May we be obedient to God's call so that we abide in Christ as Christ abides in us. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>